Hello YouTube viewers, it's John again. I'm playing five minutes against Revisor and I'm gonna play a Spanish. I'm gonna play the exchange variation because it's been a while since I played E4. Let's see what we get against Mr. Revisor from Russia. F6. Uh-huh. This line, do I take or do I play C3? I cannot quite recall. Uh, I'm going to go with c3, because I could not for the life of me remember the move. Let's go knight bd2. Looks normal. Let's go queen b3. Is that kosher? Probably not. Alright, let's take... Release the tension. And then knight c4. I realize I'm possibly playing this in sketchy fashion. But actually, like I kind of like the look at this now. Bishop h5, I have knight f5. Let's go here first. Should probably play g6, huh? Oh no, g6, I would have trapped his bishop. Hmm. I mean, knight f5 seems very obvious, but I don't want to make that move yet. I just don't. Well, alright, let's go for it. Then I can at least bring my knight back here. And complete my development. If bishop c5, I have rook takes d7. It was the same tactic that cropped up in one of my games that I posted recently. So perhaps it's hard for him to free himself a little bit. I fear that this knight will be cut out of the game soon if I don't do something with it. So let's go knight f5 again. I am threatening his g-pawn. I have a loose plan of just attacking down the d-file. Who is Mr. Revisor? Korotyalev. Probably mispronounced that. Hmm. Can I take on g5 now? That looks pretty cool. Take, take, take. Huh. Queen c4. So if I take on g5 twice and then take his bishop on f7, I can play rook takes d6, but I don't know about take, take, knight takes, queen c4. That's the line that's bothering me. I don't think I get enough. So tempting, though. So, so tempting. Hmm. I'm just going to do it. And if I fail, I fail. Hmm. Yeah, he's actually playing into what I wanted him to do. Because now after queen takes, I have rook takes d6. I was worried about queen c4. I'm going to check the move order on that. I wonder if I actually could have played rook takes d6 on the second move after bishop takes g5. Or am I just crazy? Once again, I'm down on time. At least it's for a good cause, winning material. Okay. Let's put the rook here. 
I expect him to move his knight. Yeah, knight c5. Check. Let's go b4. Queen c2. Now, I want to consolidate my advantage. I've got this great material advantage. That's peachy. But how do we consolidate it? Let's do that first of all. He's not going to want to trade so nicely. C4. He doesn't have a threat. I'm going to try to avoid moving these pawns for now until I'm, I have a better idea of where I'm going with those pawns. Knight f5, maybe restrict his knight. Yeah, I like that. Okay, I can just do knight g3 against that. Or pawn g3. So pawn g3. It is technically winning, and I just have to prevent counterplay and keep up on time. Knight b6, yeah. Can't take my e4 pawn because of rook d8. So I'm going to kick him back. I'm going to go queen d1 with an eye towards playing rook d8. Yeah. Oh, we can take on a2. Forgot about that. Just defend this. Okay, this has to be winning. Check. Check. Yeah. King b7 or a7, I've worked d7. So he resigned. Okie doke. Nice to get a win against a significantly higher rated player and a strong GM. Quote you love. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, so I played the exchange Rui because. I haven't played the main lines of the Royal Lopez from the white side for a while. I played from the black side, but I don't recall much about bishop g4. I mean, I know more about e takes d4. So bishop g4, I can't remember if, if the move is d takes e5 or if it's the move I played, c3. At any rate, we got this position. It seemed to me like he got his pieces bottled up a bit. I don't know about knight d7, because I'm I'm not actually threatening to take on e5 yet. Maybe queen e6 is good. Threatening this. Yeah, and I can't take here just for the record because he takes like that and my knight is pinned. I lose a piece. Yeah, I think I like queen e6. Let's see what the computer says. Yep, it agrees. I'm gonna turn the engine off because I'm making an effort to try to not use it so much. In so many of these videos, it's just tempting to just immediately stick the engine on, but I want to try to come to a conclusion about uh, what I thought during the game or where I could improve and then add the engine. I tell my students that all the time, so uh, I should practice it even in Blitz games. So work D1, H6. I'm not sure how he should unwind here because the dark square bishop is a problem, right? I mean, maybe again he should play that queen e6 move and just get ready to bring it out. For a moment I thought he could play g6 during the game, but then it dawned on me that g4 is winning his piece. So here I jumped in, brought my knight back to g3. 
And very soon is where the fun started, because I, I jumped into f5, and he played g5. I just couldn't resist that move. You can see I spent quite a bit of time deciding whether to play that or not. So, close to a minute. It's one of those things, like, once you start analyzing that move, um, I mean, it's fine if you don't if you don't ultimately play it, but given the amount of time I burned up and the fact that I'm getting two pawns plus potential for more, I think I kind of had to go for it at that point. Now, the move order thing I was talking about, see, I, I had, like, pre-move knight takes g5, but I actually wonder if rook takes d6 immediately is more accurate. Because then after c takes d6, now knight takes g5, and... The point is that queen c4 is no longer possible Check. due to that, just winning on the spot. So he would have to play, what, queen f6, I think, is forced in this position? Yeah, because queen g6 runs into knight e7. That knight is just killer. It can, like, fork him in so many different ways. And queen e8, knight takes d6, of course. So I think queen f6 would be forced, but then just knight takes f7. I'm forking his rooks. He can't take me back. It's going to be similar to the game. Yeah, similar to the game. Except his pawn is on d6 instead of c7. Hmm, that's an interesting nuance. Oops, I did not mean to do that. Um, so the way I played it in the game, I thought he had to play queen c4. Unless I'm missing something, I think this is the only move. And I just wasn't sure, like, I I think, I don't know what to do, though. Because, hmm, I wanted to move my queen, but maybe I should just go for this endgame. Oh, you know, I can still play this move, actually. And then after take, take, Check. just go pick up the bishop. And material-wise, white's doing well still. Not as great as in the game. But, um, yeah, I mean, I have three extra pawns and a knight for the rook. Also, I'm threatening this and this. He can get out of that, I guess, like something like this, but probably, you know, this this might be winning for white too, technically speaking. I mean, these pawns, once I once I have everything consolidated, those pawns are just too much for black. So yeah, the way he played it in the game after this, this must be losing. Rip takes d6. So now that I've made some loose conclusions on my own, I'm going to go out on a limb and say this is justified. And I'm curious what the computer will say about the position. Yes, vindication. <laughs> this bishop takes g5 the best move? Yes, it is, according to the engine. And it says he should just play rook dg8 and sacrifice the pawn. He took... Took the knight. Okay, so it approves of that. What about the alternative move order? No, that is bad. Good thing you didn't do that, John. Take, take, bishop h5. Uh-huh. Did not consider that move at all. So, oh, okay, so if I try to go here, he can go queen takes f5. And if I continue the bloodbath, he takes here. And black is up a piece. Uh-huh. All right, so good I didn't get fancy with rook takes d6. Knight takes g5. Yeah, and he's got to play queen c4. Let's see if it gives that take, take, rook takes d6 line. Yep, it does. Cool. Check. Yeah, and then take here. I mean, that looks like a big advantage, but in a blitz game, given especially given I'm probably down on time at this point, too, if we reach this. Um, it's, it's a long ways to go to win it, but it's nice to see that your calculation in a five minute game is backed up when you, when you start getting into a sharp position. So I don't know that it was too interesting after this. Well, there were a couple moments. Check. Let's take a look. I just wanted to play safe, not give him anything unnecessary, unnecessary counterplay. Bully him with exchanges, because when you're heading material, you can often bully your opponent with exchanges. It's a war of attrition, oftentimes, and 
I like knight f5 because I wanted to keep this knight from somehow snaking its way into the game. Or jumping its way into the game. A knight doesn't really snake, does it? <laughs> Leave that to the bishops. Computer just says go c5. But I like this move. G3. He kind of thrashed around. I gotta be careful, because I mean, yeah, knight takes c4 is a threat. I didn't like c5, because I thought he would just come into c4. Oh, okay, but then I have rook d3 anyways. It just picks up his knight, doesn't it? So, many roads lead to Rome in this case. Now c5. I did miss that after this he could take on a7, or uh, take on a2 rather. What's the move that... Oh, I missed knight h6. Okay, knight h6 just won the exchange in the game instantly, but... I was focused on um, getting my rook down to d8 and setting up threats against the c8 knight. Because one line that crossed my mind is like, if takes, I'd like to be able to play knight e7, but then he takes and he has queen b1 check. Check. And picks up this pawn with check. If it wasn't for that, then you know this this would surely be winning. So on queen takes a2, I should do this and then just start pushing the pawns. Okay, that makes perfect sense. Yeah, and he he's gonna be hard pressed to cope with those pawns. And his majority on the queen side is totally crippled. Yep, as played, this happened. Check. I got my queen into d6 and he resigned. Yeah, so the queen, king b7, check. d7 check is winning. Okay, I was happy with that game. Time could have been slightly better, but overall I think the quality of play on my part was, was high, so nice to get a win. All right, hope you guys enjoyed that Exchange Roy Lopez game, and please leave me any feedback in the comments. Thanks for tuning in, guys. See you later.